Okay, uh, uh, first we continue the uh, outlines from page 5. Okay, um, reference 11, page 5. Second, showing that the Buddha also qualifies that definition in the context of reliability has two parts. Meaning, after learning what as to what what constitutes what constitutes valid cognition, valid cognition, which is such a reliable mind and with such a zeal and power of mind, it's not just an imitation, imitation of the early minds, but with such a powerful, a self-powered knowledge, cognizance. So with this as the definition of a valid mind, then this definition, element of the knowledge, that is that is applicable to the Buddha also. So therefore, it may this makes the Buddha reliable guide. So it says, showing that the Buddha also qualifies that definition. What definition? Definition of valid cognition in the context of reliability. In the context of reliable, the Buddha is very reliable in terms of you. In terms of you are seeking his help to achieve your goal. Okay, it has two parts. Explaining the Buddha as the valid one or the reliable guide. Okay, be watchful. So basically, in Tibetan, it is just a sema. Sema, in, in the context of epistemology and logic, sema means valid cognition. But for the Buddha, because the, the, this the validity can be understood in, on three levels or three kinds. One is the person. Other one is the mind. The third one is the speech. Okay, so that way I deliberately alter the translation um, three, in three different ways. One is reliable guide. The second one is valid one. And the third one is uh, just the, the valid cognition, right? So in relation to Buddha, I deliberately you know, alter the, the translation so that it makes sense to you, one. And then number two, in future, if you if you get encounter with this the same the, the same text translated by different translators, then they may use some other vocabularies, so that you will not get lost. You will, if you know these different translations, then uh, um, in future you will not get lost. Okay. Then the second part, explaining the meaning of having transformed. Meaning that the Buddha Shakyamuni, once he was just an ordinary person, and then he slowly transformed into, into the reliable guide. So why this word transform is used here? What is the, is there any special purpose? Okay, the first one, explaining the Buddha as the valid one. Um, page 6, stanza 8a. Since the transcendent, so this is the root text. Since the transcendental one, transcendental one meaning the Buddha, since the transcendental one is endowed with it, it means the validity. The validity, validity or the validity or the definition of the valid cognition. The meaning of the valid cognition is what the transcendental or the Buddha is endowed with. So therefore, he is indeed the valid one. He is indeed, the Buddha is indeed the valid one. Then you may, but it does not say anything how it is valid one. So all these will, the whole, the whole body of the text is for that purpose. So it's just opening the, starting the, the discussion, right? Okay, uh, reference 13. Second, explaining the meaning of having transformed has two parts. Explaining the meaning of, the, the meaning of tra having transformed. So why, so where is this word having transformed, having evolved? Where is this word, where is this uh, passage taken, taken from? Acharya Dignaga's word of solution. Where do you where do you find that? Page one. On page one, it says that the one who is transformed into the supreme reliable guide. Even this word transformed. There's a tremendous reason for Acharya Dharma Dignaga saying this. So what is the reason? We'll study this. Uh, page six, reference thirteen. Second, explaining the meaning of having transformed has two parts. One. The purpose when mentioning having transformed. Number two, clarifications related to having accomplished the purpose, meaning that one, what is the purpose of mentioning having transformed? In this connection, uh, so, okay, this is what I'd like to share with you. Um, unlike today's time, in those days, this is 7th century AD, which is about 1,000, how many years ago? 
1,000? How many years ago? 300. Okay, 1,300 years ago. In those days, in those days, the, the custom or the tradition is very different. The, the logicians, they debate, they explicitly pinpoint to, the, they try to reject your position. But now here, we are using those things not to reject outside other people, to reject one's own bad imprints of the mind, right? Say, we all have an instinctual, not necessarily all, 99% of the people have the instinctual belief. In, there's the instinct to believe in some external force. And then instinct to surrender, right? Surrender to that force. And then as well, like, you don't have any power, right? Just to simply listen to the detail of that external force. So this is the imprint that almost all of us have, not necessarily from this life, from the past lives, we have this imprint. So now all these debates, don't think of these debates as, okay, how to, how, how to refute the non-Buddhist traditions. No, it, is, it has nothing to do with that, particularly in this era. Just think of how to refute my own bad imprints, which I, which I brought or inherited from my past lives, many past lives, right? Okay. Because the, the moment you have the belief in the external force, which governs everything, then it takes you far away from understanding emptiness. It takes you far away from understanding emptiness. And without understanding emptiness, then gade gade is impossible. Because with understanding emptiness, then you see the goal. Without seeing the goal, where do you go? You don't know how to go. Where do you go? You don't know. So therefore, gade gade is not possible. If the gade gade is not possible, then whether you like it or not, we have to, we have to be in. Whether you're happy or not happy, you should be. We should be be in samsara. There is no freedom, right? And sometimes we may take birth as human beings. Other times we may take birth close by chavarsamne. And other times we may take birth in the hands of the terrorists. Other times we may take birth as chickens in the KFC. <laughs> And other times we may take birth as, say, uh, the seafoods, seafoods or the costly area, the place in the, the, the dishes of the fast hotel. So these are all, this is how, without understanding emptiness, whether we like it or not, this is the situation. There's no choice. So therefore, it is so crucial. It's not a matter of, it is not a matter of rejecting some of the positions. It is to reject one's own bad imprints. Imprints so that you could, you could get the vision of the reality. Once you have the vision of the reality, then you will know where to go. Then seeing that the, the situation where you are in at the moment, this is like as well, you are surrounded by all these pythons. Then say, if you are sitting like this in a very relaxed way, and then say, if you are a very small child, if you're a very small child, you may say that, Mom, would you mind bringing me a glass of juice? Right? Why not you do it yourself? Please don't say like this. And then if there is a snake going here, you will say, Mom, would you mind removing the snake? You will not say this. You will jump. The sense of urgency will come to you. And you know where to jump. Because you know where the snake is absent. Whereas, if you see this, if you see that the snake is everywhere, you don't know where to jump. There's no choice, right? Likewise, samsara where we are is like where the all these snakes are. And then only when you see the only when you see say sometimes uh, we come across. Uh, just this morning, I read the, the newspaper, and it's so sad. One boy, age 24, one boy, age 24, and who is, who has a good job in a corporate, good job, and having heard that his mother passed away because of cancer, he went to his friend's place, I think, what, 14th floor, top, and then he jumped from there, he died, right? So no, what made him to take that action? Because tremendous pain. 
he could not bear overseeing the, the demise of his very beloved mother, right? So this is the situation. See, when the, the boy, when the boy got a good job, the mother is so happy, and then is so happy. This is one scenario of samsara. And then because you love the mother so much, then one day you see that your mother passed away. That, that pain, you cannot bear it. So this is again another scenario of samsara. So what is this is what we are all bound to go through. This is what we are all bound to go through. Right? So this is what I'm saying. Imagine being in the hands of the terrorist. You can't really predict your tomorrow. You can't really predict your next hour. Such a fear is there. And without this emptiness, experience of emptiness, there's no choice. There's no choice. It's not that that some people, they go into the hands of, okay, we like to be in the terrorist hand. No, nobody wants to go there. But then the karma somehow take you there. This is the situation. Therefore, we need to have the experience of emptiness. This is so precious. Okay, now this being, this being the case, this being the case, this being the case, then it says that, that having transformed this set to reject Having transformed is set to, uh, okay, we yeah. are. Um, so with this, then we see that experience and is, is so important. And one of the, the things which obstruct us from having the experience of emptiness is the belief in what is the opposite of emptiness? Emptiness of, emptiness of independent existence. Okay. Emptiness of inherent existence. Emptiness of independent existence. So when you believe in some external force which is so independent, when you believe in some external force which is so independent, then your belief in the independence is being reinforced. Because of which, your seeing of everything as empty of independence is impeded. Right? So that stops you from see, clo being closer to his emptiness. Therefore, the whole discourse here, here, rejecting the concept of creator. It is not meant to reject the other religions. It is meant to reject one's own bad imprints of, of such beliefs. That is so important. And once you learn all these things from your side, you must try to gain conviction. It's not just a belief. Okay, Creator God is not there. Um, now I, I started going to Chogar Sumling. I learned that uh, Creator God is not there. And then uh, you meet with you know, other people who believe in Creator God. There's no God. No, this is not a purpose. It is not a purpose. The purpose is to say, say such a such a belief system imprints with myself, which we have been, which we have been going through for lives and lives, lives and lives in the past. So these imprints have to be cut, right? And then for other people, it is not your business to to make to uh, to to arouse anger in other people. Well, this is not a business. Our business is to first take care of ourselves and then see how much we can help others. Uh, help others, not in um, a pushy way, right? Okay, so all these uh, discussions here, they, they are, um, in the past, it is just, just head on, head on debating with other people. Head on debating with other people. But nowadays, these debates are to be used for as head on debate within, internal debate. It should not be external, right? With that in mind, let's turn to reference 14, page 6, reference 14. First, the purpose of mentioning having transformed. So this Prince Siddharth, he slowly transformed into the fully enlightened being or the reliable guide. Meaning that a reliable guide, a reliable being or uh, say some kind of uh, same creator. A creator which existed as perfect and independent since primordially is impossible. Then what about Buddha in Buddhism? Same. Even he, even he is not of that kind. He was once he was just ordinary like us. Right? Because if you believe, if you believe in such concept that this Buddha is so perfect since primordially then all these logics you will contradict. You will see that logics contradict this belief. So, 
the larger contradicting the belief in the perfection since primordially since primordially is applicable to all other belief systems where one believes in some external force which is independent existence since primordially many of the buddhists also believe that many of the buddhists who do not have the real understanding of buddhism they also believe in such a concept very unfortunate so it says that um, a b having transformed is said to reject non-production meaning that say prince that was not fully enlightened then he is slowly he is produced this prince that who was ordinary person ordinary boy then he slowly became he slowly became the enlightened being okay so he slowly became the enlightened being so the enlightened being is produced is produced right it says that heaven transformed itself to reject non-production the buddha was produced from non-enlightened state enlightened buddha came to being from the non-enlightened state it it is produced from there it was not non-produced non-produced meaning if it exists as enlightened since primordially since primordially then it is never produced as a enlightened being produced as a connotation that once it was not enlightened and slowly it became enlightened then what about the what about the belief then belief in some kind of agent which is so pure so perfect since time immemorial since beginning this is logically going to be rejected right okay um having transformed this set to reject a non production non production of what non production of the enlightened being non production of enlightened being therefore it is proper that a valid one valid one the reliable one the reliable guide guide should be causally contingent meaning should be someone who became a reliable guide by dependence by contingent on the causes what causes the four factors we have which we have learned what are they altruism teacher sugada and protector so so these are the four causal factors which eventually made this prince dar ordinary prince into a fully enlightened being okay now uh, second reference 15 second clarifications related to having accomplished the purpose has two parts one rejecting now all this concept of the creator as being rejected here rejecting the one who knows how to do all actions as the omniscient one so say the creator in the form of two ways one the agent the agent and then even the concept of creator there are so many versions there are so many versions there are so many versions one who is believed to be be able to act in all possible ways to create everything one another one is who is believed to know each and every detail like how to construct the ant molds ant molds ant hills right the 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 house where the ants live so ants they made that they must have some architecture there architects there ants so how the the ant molds are created by the ants doing all these things so omniscient means someone who should know all these details right then one is omniscient so these are the wrong concepts then when somebody is so good when somebody is so good in physical yoga wow guru right this is a problem so once okay i don't i don't want to demean anyone but ordinary beings this is such a pathetic situation once i okay some people right yoga gurus right because the one is so good in the yoga then he becomes a guru yoga means physical exercise so then so once there was a document film one american uh what um the a black black young boy he has just a body like the plastic you know very flexible body much 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 more flexible than the the people who are yoga gurus then he could easily make money out of be you know becoming a guru so that way physical exercise does not mean that a person is mentally evolved and then with the ordinary beings we are simply being carried away that because of the physical 
thing, and the people said, Yoga Guru, Guru. This is such a pathetic situation. So, rejecting all these things. Uh, reference 16, okay, no, reference 15, uh, number two. Establishing the one who knows the reality of all phenomena as the omniscient one. Uh, reference 16, first, reject, rejecting the one who knows how to do all actions as omniscient one has two, part, two parts. Rejecting creator as the cell bone. Okay, here, as I read the outlines, don't worry too much about, okay, I'm just getting lost. What is there? Uh, there are some places where you start from here, you start from here, you are meant to get somewhere in the middle, and you get lost. What, what is that place known as? Maze. 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 Okay, say so you will get that feeling that you are in the maze, right? Don't worry. Don't worry. As long as you are with me at that particular moment, and then the, the, the first part disappears from your mind, don't worry, right? Don't worry, just come with me. As come along with me, and then if you forget or if you get lost, but as long as you are just with me, in this particular the word I'm saying, I'm reading, this is good enough. Okay. Um, reference 16. Rejecting the one who knows how to do all actions as omniscient one has two parts. Meaning that 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 such a thing, one who knows how to do all actions, one who knows how to do all actions, and so perfect, and so pure, from the beginning, is impossible. Because it is impossible, it is non-existent. How can a non-existent thing be a reliable guide? Okay. Um, it, has, it has two parts. Rejecting creator, the last line of page six. Re rejecting creator is the self-born permanent omniscient one. Now things are becoming clearer. Self-born, meaning that there was no cause. There was no cause, and everything was just from self-born and also permanent. Such an omniscient phenomena does not exist. Number two, rejecting the reasons to support creator as the omniscient one. Okay, a reference 17. First, rejecting creator as the cell born permanent omniscient one. Okay, now the root text. Valid cognition cannot be permanent, as it should be the valid one to cognize an existent thing. Since a cogni cognized is impermanent, it is not, it is non-static. Okay, what it is saying is, I'll explain this. I say, I am the cogn cognizer. I am the, I am the valid. Say, uh, the the discussion is happening that uh, there is. On the one hand, we have the say, say you are the non-believer of non-believer of creator, and I'm the believer in creator. So there is a dispute going between us. And then um, venerable um, Rabdana is there as a judge. Then what he does is that okay, he will just say create just a scenario. So do you believe in creator? Then I said yes, a permanent, a permanent self-born entity which dictates all phenomena. And then when um, Rabdana says, that, okay, let this be the, the, let this be the, let this be that creator, right? Whether it exists or not, this is a debate. And then when Rabdana asks you, right, whether you accept in this, what is your answer? No, right? How not? Then Acharya Dharmakirti is giving the answer, saying that valid cognition, if this is a valid cognition, permanent, Valid cognition exists. Valid cognition exists, meaning that the mind which sees the flower is flower, it exists. Right? The mind which sees sugar swimming center as the sugar swimming ex uh, center exists. But creating, a, creating, creating one, uh, say, bringing one entity as a valid cognition, at the same time, a permanent, that should be a permanent entity and self born, meaning it does not depend on the causes. If it depends on causes, other causes, then it is not self-born. It is born from others. It is dependent on others. So self-born and permanent. If this entity is what I believe in, and then you reject it, so how you reject it? So Acharya Dharma Giri said that valid cognition cannot be permanent. So valid cognition cannot be permanent. You will argue against me. As it should be the valid one to cognize an existing thing. So this valid cognition, what it sees others, what it is, sees others, right, should be 
since the cognize as it should be the valid one to cognize an existing thing. It should be cognizing something, say the creator. The creator, I believe in that and you do, do not believe in that. So this creator, I believe that it, cogn it cognizes all phenomena. Then you are saying that as it should be the valid one to cognize an existing thing. Then my answer is, yes, it cognizes all the existing things. Then you say that since the cognized is impermanent, it is non-static. Meaning that now you say, there's the creator, which I believe in it. And then this creator, I believe that it cognizes all other phenomena. So all other phenomena becomes, uh, become the object of this creator. So this creator is the subject or the agent. You're getting it? You're getting it? Okay. This creator is the agent. And then what it sees, all the other things which this creator sees becomes, become there, become the creator's object. Now, now the object and subject is there. So if the object is changing, how can the subject not change? This is the debate, right? If the object is changing, how can the subject not change? For example, say, I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you, and then when I say I'm looking at you, then you become a little alert, right? So then my mind, which has the perception of you being so alert, comes into being. And slowly, 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 right? And then you say, okay, he will continue to look at me, so if I'm so alert like this, I'm pushing myself, then you become relaxed, right? You change, the object changes from being very alert to a little lax. As the object changes, my perception you also changes. The subject also changes. Subject also changes, right? Because the object is changing, the subject should be changing. If the subject does not change, then the subject will not see any change in the object, right? So it says that since the cognized, cognized is the object, since the ob cognized is impermanent, it, it meaning the cognizant, cognizant or the subject, the creator, should, cannot be static, cannot, cannot be permanent. It should be impermanent. So therefore, such an agent which is permanent and permanent and all-knowing cannot possibly exist. Stanza 10. Those produced sequentially cannot feasibly be produced from a permanent thing. Okay, so let's say, uh, let me give an example of, say, the apple seed giving rise to apple tree. Apple seed giving rise to apple tree, right? As long as you are following me, that is good enough. Don't think about, okay, earlier, the early stanza nine, it seems to make sense, now I'm getting lost, right? If you just get engrossed there, you are missing stanza 10. So just follow me. Then later on, going back home, you go through the, the stanzas once more, and then it may not make any sense to you then. Don't worry. Don't worry, provided you listen to the recording once more or twice more. Okay, now imagine there's the apple seed and the apple seed grows into huh? apple tree, very good. So apple tree is the result and the apple seed is the cause. Say the creator, the creator God, the creator is the cause and then it gives rise to all other phenomena. It creates all other phenomena. So this is my belief, right? Now, for you to understand whether it is true or not, let us uh, take a simple example of apple seed as the creator God, creator, and then it gives rise to apple tree as the phenomena, the, the, crea the what, creatures, the creator and the creatures. Okay, so the, the, the creatures, meaning the result, result in the form of apple tree, keeps on changing. You agree with me or not? Initially it was very small, then it grows taller, 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 right? And then even the box, they're becoming more and more solid. Okay, this is a change happening in the result. If the change in the result is there, then the change, is the change in the cause is inevitable. Because if the, the cause does not change at all, then the result will not come into being. If there's no change at all in the cause, say the seed of the, the, the apple seed, you, you keep it on the table, it will never give rise to apple tree. If you keep the apple seed on the table without making it come in contact with the soil, water, then the sunlight, it will never give rise to apple seed, no apple tree, right? So the moment we put it 
in the soil with water, with air, with sunlight and so forth, then the seed becomes soft, right? Early it was hard, then it becomes soft. There's a change in the seed. Then it starts germinating. It starts germinating. So there's obvious change. So this change only, this change alone allows the apple tree to come into being. You agree with me or not? Whereas if the apple seed always remains as apple seed, right, it will never give rise to the, the result which is changing, apple tree which is changing. So likewise, if the, the, the creator is a permanent entity, it will never change. If that is a cause and never changing, how can, it, how can you possibly see the results which are constantly changing, coming into being? So it says, stanza 10, those produced sequentially, meaning the results, the results which are produced sequentially, meaning that moment there is a change happening sequentially, cannot feasibly be produced, cannot possibly be produced from a permanent thing which is unchanging. If permanent, it or the permanent permanence, permanence should not be contingent. Why? Why, if the cause is permanent, the result is not possible. Because if the, if the cause is permanent, it becomes non-contingent. It becomes non-dependent on other things. If it is not dependent on other things, then that, that it does not have to wait for the soil. It does not have to wait for the other factors. It does not have to wait for the, any other factors. It can just give rise to the, the result anytime it wishes. But then, even for the seed to give rise to the result, it has to wait for the the conducive factors. Therefore, it, meaning imperm the permanence, permanent phenomena, should not be contingent. It can, cannot be dependent, contingent meaning cannot be dependent, as nothing can, if it is not dependent, then nothing can assist that. Nothing can change that. If it, if it is not changed, then the results cannot be brought forth. So, okay, uh, reference 18, a second. Rejecting the reasons to support creator as the omniscient one has two parts. Pointing to the flaws of the reason, rejecting the creator as the creator of all. One, pointing to the flaws of the reason which support the omniscience of creator. Uh, stanza 11. Stanza 11. Despite being impermanent, now the, the opponents, they change their position. Now the opponents, they change their position. Okay, if the, cre the creator is supposed to be permanent, then I can't, I can't defend myself of these arguments. So now, they change the position a little bit. Okay, the creator is there, the creator which is so pure, so perfect, so perfect, and being able to create everything is there, but it's impermanent, right? Although it is impermanent, but since, prime, since time immemorial, since time immemorial, this had been, like, this had been the, a, the creator. It had never been like the ordinary thing and then eventually became a creator. No. It was a creator since primordially, although in the mode of changing. For example, the Buddha's mind. The Buddha's mind, right? Say, uh, let, us put it like, uh, let us put it like this. Say the atoms, atoms which are made of protons, neutrons, electrons. So these elementary particles, these elementary particles, right? Is it that they change, they change, and then at one point they become non-elementary particles? Huh? Is it possible? Okay. Elementary particles, say electrons, protons, they can change, at the most they can change into energy from the physics point of view. At the most they can change into energy, and energy can be changed into elementary particles. So this is the maximum it can change into. So... It's not that at one point it is elementary particles and then the, the next moment it annihilates altogether. This is not the case in physics. Likewise, Buddha's mind is so pure. And the Buddha's first moment of Buddha's mind changes to the second moment of the Buddha's mind, which is also pure. And it changes to the third moment of the... Any mind, all minds should necessarily be impermanent. What is the first seal of the Buddha's teachings? What is the first seal of the Buddha's? What is the first of the four seals of the Buddha's teaching? All composite things, all composite things are impermanent. 
all composite things are impermanent, meaning anything which is composed of composed of composed of particles, composed of segments of the mind, temporal segments of the mind, they all should necessarily be impermanent. Buddha's mind is also a composite phenomenon. So therefore the Buddha's mind is also changing. But change doesn't mean that it changes from good to bad or bad to good. It can be from the per change of change from the state of perfection to the uh, to another state of perfection, second state of perfection. So the Buddha's mind qualifies to that, that characteristic. But then the Buddha's mind Initially, it was what? Not the omniscient mind. It was the ordinary mind like ours mind. Then it changed from the imperfection to the state of perfection. Once it reaches the state of perfection, then it keeps on changing, but changing from the perfection to the perfection to the perfection to the perfection. This is how the change happens. So with that, similar to this, the opponents, they change their position by saying that, that the creator is there, but, but seeing that I can't defend the position that the creator to be permanent, then I changed my standpoint saying that the creator is there, but it is impermanent. At the same time, it exists as creator since time immemorial. Right? Okay, stanza 11. Despite being impermanent, no valid cognition exists to prove it to be omniscient. So if you believe in such an agent as impermanent, at the same time, omniscient and creator since time immemorial, this is what you cannot defend. You cannot defend this position as well. How? The reason such as it acts intermittently, a unique shape, functioning, and so forth, are invalid. So they, they, uh, they, uh, they say myself, who believe in there is such a creator, they tend to give these reasons. One is what? It acts intermittently. Intermittently. Meaning that, say, Last year it rained here in Bangalore. Last year it rained. Okay. Well, which month? Which month? Huh? Last year. Last year. Which month? July. 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 Okay, that's July. And then again this year also in July. So it's as though like there's someone, there's someone who dictates, who keeps a calendar that okay, in July it should rain and then send the rain. Right? And then, okay, now October, November, no rain. Okay, now the rain all just packed up. And then, then keep the calendar just watching. And then again, the next year, oh, now it's July coming. Again, rain. Right? Rain. It is as though like this, sun, such agent like this. This was what came to my mind so strongly when I was in Drepung, my monastery in Drepung, which is close by Hubli. It came so, so, it's so, it's so, it fascinated me so much. How? Say, late March, early, early, early April, there's going to be a little bit of shower. A little bit of shower. So that is for what? That is okay. So here, two. And how many from Mungod? One, two, three, four. Okay, say, there was a little shower. So that is meant for the farmers to make this, the land the soft. And then the farmers go there and then hit the what? Pumba chasi, right? Hit the solid, the, the, the very hard soil, they hit it. And then the little shower. I was so fascinated. Little shower. And then it stops. Then it's time for the farmers to go to uh, put the, the seeds. And again it showers a little bit. And again it stops. Meant to, to remove the weeds. And then it will shower for continues for three months. Meant for the, the crops to grow. And then it stops for the farmers to, to harvest the, the crop. I was just watching it. Just for the first time I was listening to the, the people there then see all, I could see that with my own eyes. I was so fascinated. Either they should be God to dictate all these things. And then more than that, I was so fascinated. If people in the people in the north, to the north, right? Close by the by the by the Himalayas, they don't have to worry about the water. And the water is the what survives the human beings. They don't have to worry about the water. So much of what river, all these things are there. 
And then, what about those guys in the plane? Right? They don't have the, these rivers, they don't have the snowfall, no. Right? Don't worry. Don't worry. There's some agent which sends water down the earth, and it goes down the earth, so down there they can dig the, uh, the well or bore well, and then water can be taken out of that. Amazing, right? Amazing. But then what about the, the source of this water? This all came from that snow mountain, right? And then this snow, it, it keeps on flowing like this, then this snow will uh, disappear one day. Don't worry, right? All the, the water which go waste, from there again, that, that agent will take everything up there once more. The sunshine, sunshine, and then the sea gets evaporated, and then it will be taken to the highest spot, not to the lower spot. Highest spot, which is the mountains, which is further away from the sea, from the ocean. It will be taken there in the form of, not in the form of water, in the form of snow. Because if it is water, it will just go in one and then disappears the next day. If it is put in the form of snow, then it's nice. Slowly, slowly you can use that. I was so fascinated. How come that all these things are happening? Amazing. And then this water will not go like fly to the, to the snow mountains. They have to be very in the form of the cloud. And the cloud will move there. And then we'll throw the snow. And the snow will be reserved there for some time. And from the little part of the snow is used in the form of glaciers, in the form of water, then the river going down. And then some can use the river directly, and others can use it in the form of the uh, ground, uh, ground water. I was so fascinated, so fascinated. Either there is God, either there's one Asian which dictates all these things, who's so considerate of the, the beings on the planet Earth, or is a pure karma. Only two things possible. Otherwise, this phenomena cannot possibly happen. This phenomena cannot possibly happen. Now, studying this text, we see that the, there's some kind of external agent which dictates that that is totally rejected through pure reasoning and logic. So what is option left? Only the karma, right? Only our, our own actions determine all these phenomena. Okay. Okay, so say, they say they give the same three three reasons they give. They say that look at the uh, look at the, the phenomena happening on the earth. Uh, say the farmers they need water. The farmers they need water this in which month? In the month of April. So don't worry. So next year in April there's gonna be water, rain. So someone is dictating that. So there's an intermittent, there's intermittent, there's intermittent action of sending rain, right? There must be some agent there. So it says that reasons such as it acts intermittently, meaning that it sends the rain and then it keeps a little gap, it keeps a little gap, and then the next year, again at the same time, they will send the rain. This kind of action is happening intermittently. A unique shape. Look at the same, same. Look at the mountains. It has such a good shape so that it can hold the, the water. If it is not sloped, it is a flat, then the water will not flow down. So the mountains, they are again <laughs> sloped so that it can keep the whole the snow and the, the water can, when it, when, when it, what? When it melts, then the water can slide down the, the, the mountain. Wow, it's amazing. Again, it is, this proper shape is there. So look, unique shape. Look at this unique shape. Then functioning. Say the things. Say the, the water. Water. Not only that, the water, then the snow melts into the water. Then the water, water actually flows down. Where, it is, where the people require it, it goes down there. You don't go there and make a pipeline. No, we don't do that. It flows down. So there's a function happening there. Okay. So with all these three reasons, then they say that there is an external agent. There is an external force which decides all these things. So that is known as the omniscient one who, who is responsible for creating everything and which, although it is impermanent, which existed since time immemorial. Okay. Now, the last, second last line of stanza 11. 
either it establishes the accepted or the example is not established or it leaves a doubt. So this is Acharya Dharmagirdi's, uh, Dharmagirdi's what? rejection of this argument. It's saying that, that all the answers that you have given before, all the answers that you have given before, they are either, they are either what I accept or established or it does not have a it does not have a convincing example to prove that, or the provision, or the uh, the word, uh, the the reasoning is doubtful. Meaning that so the first one is saying that if you mean to say that because there is the, because there's intermittent action. Okay, uh, so uh, what you are uh, then is there any banger? Is there any banger? Right? Okay, somebody has a fixed deposit. Fixed deposit, right? Say, say November, November 6th. What is today? 7th, right? Oh, November 6th, 2014, fixed deposit for one year. And then the banker may inform you today, 7th, November 7th. After one year, okay, your uh, fixed deposit is matured, right? Which means that there's one person coming to inform you about this. So Acharya Dharmakirti is saying that this intermittent action, this intermittent action, that you put the fixed deposit, and for one year, nothing happens. And then the next year, after completion of one year, then one, some kind of action is happening, that the banker comes to you or informs you, telephone, whatever to inform you about maturity, right? There's, there's action which is happening intermittently, intermittently. So this action, from this, we cannot prove the, we cannot pro prove the creator. We can prove the existence of a mind, of a mind, if it is meant to prove the existence of a mind. We, we also accept that. But it doesn't mean that there's a creator God or a creator mind. One. So it says, either it establishes the accepted. I also accept that. If you mean to say that this intermittent action means to prove the existence of a mind. Mind? That I also accept. So you don't have to prove that to me. One, accept it. Or the example is not established. If you say that that mind is not just an ordinary mind, this is an omniscient mind or a creative mind, that is you don't have an example to prove. You don't have an example to tell me that such a mind exists. It says, or the example is not established, number two. Then, or it leaves a doubt. Or if you say that this, because there's such action, then it proves that there is a mind which is omniscient and mind which creates everything. So that pervasion, saying that, okay, um, say this person is so good. This person is so good because, because, because she's a girl. Is it necessary that all girls should necessarily be good? Not necessary. Or this person is so good because he's a boy. So the reason does not reason is not valid. Simply because someone is a boy doesn't mean that he should be good. Simply because someone is a girl doesn't mean that he sh she should be good. So the reason does not apply. The reason is not not uh, uh, not applicable. Or it leaves a doubt in the reasoning, in the power of the reasoning. Okay. Stanza 12. Determined by the presence of blessings, anything like a space is created. What is inferred through that is valid for the creation of the avas of beings. Now, Acharya Chandrakirti, Acharya Dharmakirti, what is being said earlier is going to be made a little clearer here. A little clearer here. Saying that, that the opponents say, me, so I, who accepts such a creative creator. Um, I may say that because of the blessings of this creator, blessings of the creator, then the things are created by the blessings of the creator. Determined by the presence of blessings, anything like a shape is created. The shape and so forth is created. Okay. Look at this glass. How many of you would, if I say that this glass is a natural occurrence. No, no one created it. It is created by nature. How many of you would believe in it? Seeing this 
seeing this, the shape, this and so forth, 100% a human being or someone has created it, has made it in a factory, right? Right? Okay. So, Acharya Dharmkirti is saying that seeing, for example, these shapes like this, then this Chogar Sumling house, so, um, the Chogar Sumling house and these things, sometimes, uh, Miraculous creations. Some people say that, oh, this is created by the saint miraculously. This, uh, I personally think that this is bringing embarrassment to the saint. Right? Created what? I created a, a, a very non uniform uh, needle, needle out of, um, say, what, a piece of, a piece of metal. Created a needle. Needle which is not at all uniform. Uh, look at the, the middles created in the, the factories. So uniform. It's amazing. Right? So factories are greater miracle than the, the saints. Right? Okay, and then, okay, I, so there are so many such things. Okay, so here, so with this, then it says that if I see some shapes, on that basis you say, how can this shape come into being? if not created by the God, created by the Creator. Then, Acharya Dharmakati is saying that, of course, by seeing, for example, at this shape, we will immediately get a feeling that it was created by someone, but not as a creator in the form of a, someone who's perfect and um, like this. It's the effort of the beings, effort. So the creator in the context of the people who believe in the creator, the creator should, have, should be effortless. And whereas for, for sure, this one is, I've, not, I've never seen which factory it, it produced. I've never seen who the people were, but 100% we could say that so many efforts were involved in creating this. So for sure, it is not created by a creator, right? So Acharya Dharmakirti is saying, stanza 12, determined by the presence of blessings, anything like a shape is created. This is the position of the opponents. What is inferred through that is valid for the creation of the efforts of the beings. The second two lines, position of Acharya Dharmakirti, saying that what is inferred from this, by seeing this, we could infer that it was created by the effort of the beings, not by the effortless beings. Effort of the beings means beings who are imperfect, like us. Okay. Uh, stanza 13. That varied things are produced from varied, uh, varied courses. If inferred uh, through similar label with generic contents, such as shape, which are not distinguishable, is not valid, it is like inferring fire through gray substance. Okay, if you say that, say, look at the, look at the, look at Mount Everest, how beautiful it is, how elegant, how majestic, how majestically it stands, amazing. Who, who created that, right, with effort? No. With effort, like him, the, the one who created this glass, with effort, like that, created the mount, beautiful mount, uh, what? Mount Everest? No. Who created that? Right? Likewise, likewise, everything else, Mount Everest, it has such a beautiful shape, it has such a beautiful look, elegant look. For sure, it was created by someone. Likewise, everything which has a shape, as well should be created by that same agent because they share the same, they share the commonality, the commonality of a shape. Because even this rosary, which is totally shapeless, because it is a shape, <laughs> it is shapeless meaning, it does not have a good shape, it does have a bad shape. It does have a shape, but it's a bad shape. So because it is a shape, just as that beautiful shape was created by the creator, creator, Effortless, effortlessly created by the creator. Likewise, everything which has shape should also be created by the, uh, created effortlessly by the creator. Okay. So, then Acharya Dharmakirti is rejecting that. Saying that, rejecting that, saying that, say, from the smoke, we can infer fire. Can we? Can we? Can we not? Yes. If from a house, 
very unconventionally, very unlikely. Suddenly you see just a, a just so much of smoke coming out of that fire, which means that no, so much of smoke coming out of that house, which means that we could infer what? Infer recognition. We could infer the presence of a fire there. You getting it? Okay. And the, what is the color of the smoke? Huh? In most cases, gray. Uh, unless the, the smoke coming out of these old cars. Old cars and trucks is very black, right? Otherwise, mostly it's gray. Same. Then, because of the gray color of the smoke, the smoke, which is a gray color, we infer the fire. When you see a gray elephant, which also is a gray color, can we infer the smoke? Can we infer fire? No. So, trying to infer that all these things which have shape should be created by the creator because Mount Everest, which has a beautiful shape, was created by the creator. So therefore, all those with a shape should also be created by the creator. If this is the reason that you apply, then it is like inferring that simply seeing a smoke which, is ha which has the gray color, from there you infer this fire. Now you, from anything which is a gray color, you should be able to infer the fire, which is totally nonsense, right? So it says in stanza 12, it says that varied things are produced from varied causes. If inferred through similar label with generic contents, such as shape, because the, this, because the Mount Everest, which has a beautiful shape, is created by the creator, so all others which also have, which all, which also have shape should be created by the creator God. So which are not distinguishable, is not valid. This is not a valid position because it is like inferring fire through any gray substance, through any gray substance like the gray color of the elephant and so forth. Okay, 14. Otherwise, absurdity befalls to accept that the potter, who is the maker of the pots and so forth, which are forms of clay, should also be the maker of the anthills. Anthills is made of clay and the pot is also made of clay, right? Same. So, because that the pot, which you could so obviously see as made of clay, is made by the potter, then you go to the ant hill. Oh, that is also made of clay. Made of clay? It must be made by the potter. Is it a good inference or bad inference? It's a hopeless inference. Okay. Uh, with that, now we turn to uh, stanza uh, 15. The result, production. The result in the form of production, which pervades both the topics. Okay, now this is a little complicated, okay. Okay, so before I touch this.